first why football? Uh, because it was a sport I was the best at. Uh, I played a lot of sports, uh, but football was the one where I was the best, but it was always the one I enjoyed the most. And I think it's very important that you enjoy the sport you, that you do. Uh, but how do you discover that football was your main uh, career and your love? Uh, you know, I think as a, as a as a young boy, as I said before, you, you play as many sports as you can, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and you kind of weigh up which one do I enjoy the most. I enjoy all sports, I have to say, but I just thought football, football fascinated me. You know, I think there's a lot more to football than what people think. It's not just about being able to kick the ball. You know, it's a real tactical battle, and, and I enjoyed it. I always had an ability to to work out things very, very quick, and I think that worked well in the footballing world. At what age did you discover that football was for you? Well, I started playing football when I was five, and then for 10 years, till I was 15, uh, you kind of play with your friends, and then when you get to 15, it's, it's, it's time to... To, to take the step up and what happens then at 15 is you get selected for uh, the schoolboy internationals for Denmark and, and, and I think then you realise I've got a chance in this game. Amazing. Now who were your heroes of football? Well there wasn't a lot of uh, professional football in Denmark uh, so I was, I was kind of brought up with, with German football and I was brought up with, with English football uh, and I was an Arsenal fan and a guy called Liam Brady was, was, was my hero. But my overriding uh, influence as a kid was, was the great Dutchman, Johan Cruyff. Uh, 1974 World Cup, you sit there and you watch and all of a sudden you see this guy and you go, wow, this is something special. So although I wasn't the same type of player as, as Johan Cruyff, I really enjoyed him as a player. Now, if you had a second life, what would you aspire? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed having a almost a full life in sport, you know. So I think if there was a second life to be had, I think it would be in sport as well because it brings you such joy and it gives you opportunities. It wouldn't necessarily have to be in football, but I just think sport enables you to do things and enables you to be part of things that maybe not a lot of other things in the world can give you. Now, how has football changed uh, over the years? Uh, what do you see uh, the football of the past and the modern football? Well, obviously the, the, the principle of the games are still the same. Uh, you know, they haven't uh, changed a lot of the laws, but, but I think everything else has changed. Uh, with the money uh, and the better facilities came bigger demands. So the players are fitter than they've ever been. The players are better coached than they've ever been. And I think generally because of that, the, the game's improved. Mm. It's a very fast product now. Uh, and what football has been able to do is spread the word, isn't it? Now, speaking about traditional football and what is today, do you think it's good that football is now commercialised? I think as a, as a guy who played when I played, you want everything to stay as pure as, pure as it can. But the world doesn't allow it to be like that. So yes, of course, I would, I would, I would like it to be going back to the way it was, because when I played, it was a game. Today, it's much more than a game. Uh, but, but we can't stop that. And it'll never return to the way it was. So, has it took something away? I think for some fans, it has took something away. But as I said before, we, we, we can't stop the world. The world is progressing at a, at a rate now that it's, it's the demands. Moving forward, you know, um, many fans and aspiring football players, young football players, wants to know what are the failures that you have faced in life? Have you faced failure as a football player? Yeah, of course. Legend? I mean, you, you face failures and you face disappointments, which of course are two different things. But, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing you have to, to have is belief. Uh, how do you cope with failures or how do you cope with disappointments if you don't have belief? The easiest thing is, is always to think it's the end of the world, isn't it? But the most productive way of thinking is, how do we move on from this? What is my next step now? And, uh, you know, again, as I said before, I think it was one of the things that I was very good at. You know, that didn't quite work the way I would have liked it to, but 
we find a way, and I think that's what it's about in life, isn't it? You find a way of getting to where you want to get to, uh, and, and, and sport, and sport at the level, and I'm talking about world-class level, is, 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 is of course really difficult, and there's a lot of hurdles you have to overcome. Did you improvise your football uh, boots in any way? No. No. No, I was a, I was a very basic uh, guy. I, I kind of believed in. I didn't believe in anything that I wore. I believed in me. You know, uh, put something on my feet. I can cope with that. Uh, if the shirt is too small, I can cope with that. I believe what was inside. The next question that many of our viewers like to know from you is: What will be your advice for aspiring football players? You know, who like to follow your footsteps. What were the three key advice that you have adopted in your years as a professional? I think it, it kind of goes back to what we discussed already with the belief. You have to believe mm -hmm. that you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you step up a level, you have to believe that you belong at the level and you can cope with the level. But I think mental strength is very important. Uh, you can't afford to be too high when you win and too low when you lose. You have to find a balance. Uh, and, and of course, the ultimate thing is the talent, isn't it? If you don't have the talent, then it's very, very difficult to get there. And the talent is the gift, isn't it? Now, if you were a coach today, supposedly, you know, uh, here in Singapore, for example, what would be the three key criteria that you're looking for in a football player? Well, I think today, uh, and, and the pace that the players play, they have to be athletes. It's, it's not something I would have said 30 years ago, but in today's modern game you have to be an athlete. You know, I think you have to be technically uh, very, very good. And I also think you have to be physically strong. Players these days are bigger and stronger than they've ever been. Uh, so you have to assume that the talent uh, is, is, is there, but there's a lot of things that has to go with it. You know, and, and an athlete and being quick, and physically strong is a big part of, of, of the game these days. How much training hours did you put in in your younger days? Well, I put in a lot of hours. I mean, every, every hour I had. Uh, it's because I enjoyed it. And I watched TV, football on TV, and you think, I want to be able to do that. And there's only one way you can do that. You get out and, and, and you get working with the ball. So you literally spent about eight hours in practice every day? Well, at least, yeah. I mean, every minute I had to spare, I, I would be... You know, and it wasn't necessarily to, to one day play for Liverpool or play for Denmark. It was just, I was curious and I enjoyed it. Now, one, one of my viewers sent me a question uh, just for you, Mr. Jen, and that is, how can they develop uh, great professional players uh, in Singapore and Southeast Asia to, to a world-class uh, World Cup player? How can they do that? What's the, what, is there a secret? I don't think there's a secret. Because if, if there was a way, it wouldn't be a secret. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's obviously, uh, in terms of, of football, Singapore is a development country, isn't it? Uh, and you just have, you have to keep going. And, and, and these new countries arrive at the world stage. I mean, we, we've had the likes of South Korea, who's now, you know, a, a country that belongs at, at events like the World Cup. So you just have to keep going. You have to believe in what you're doing is right. And as I said before, there'll, there'll be knockbacks and there'll be failures in, in, in qualifying for, for tournaments, but you have to keep going, you have to believe what you're doing is, is, is right. There's no shortcuts, there's no secrets, but there is a way, and patience is a big part of that. I noticed that the, the height and the strength of the football players do matter. Uh, it does, yeah. Yeah. So what's the minimum height requirement uh, back in your club? Well, obviously, the, the there isn't a requirement, but footballers these days are six foot plus, you know, six foot two, six foot three. Uh, it, 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 it is becoming, but I also genuinely believe that the, the population in the world is becoming taller than, than, than what they were 30 years ago. But it is a, it is a big man in sport, you know, there's a lot of big athletes. Amazing. Now, moving forward, uh, I mean, thank you for the advice you've given. And as we move forward to the, today's modern world, uh, in the world of football, uh, do you, what would be your, what advice that you have kept 
for many years from that's passed down by your mentors. What would be the one advice you could give? So this is, again, it comes back into the third time I've mentioned already, isn't it? But it's to do with the enjoyment. You know, I think once the enjoyment goes out of anything you do, it affects the way you perform. So you have to maintain that enjoyment. Uh, I believe there's a lot of people chasing the dream of being a professional athlete and the enjoyment is, is, is taken away from it. And that would be the worst thing that could happen. One last, one last question, pardon me, and that is one of our review, reviewers asked, what is your secret diet? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously today, as a footballer, uh, you, you almost have no uh, input into to your diet. The, the, the football clubs are in, in control of your life 24 hours a day. Uh, so you'll get diet sheets and you'll be told what to do. And, you know, obviously, I guess what people do, they, they eat a lot of, of, of fresh vegetables and a lot of boiled fish and a, bo a lot of boiled, boiled chicken, you know. But they also eat a lot because you need a lot of, you need a lot of calories uh, as fuel in, in, in your body. Uh, but if you ever made it, at the top level of any sport, all of those things would be, would be taken out of your hands. There, there is people uh, full-time looking after you. What's next for you, uh, Mr. Jen? Well, I, I work uh, for a TV company in Denmark uh, covering football, which is the Premier League and the Champions League. Uh, I've, I've tried to be a manager. Uh, it didn't quite work, so my future is in, 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 in the TV world. Well, once again, uh, Mr. Jen,